fit. <laughs> Actually, I I thought that Shelia is going to start us off and then I start to talk, but now I'm going to do it because we were <laughs> looking at each other like, is it you? Is it me? Maybe it's me today. So hi and welcome. We are on the podcast time for you and we hope that you take some time off and do whatever you want or you work and listen to us like in the background we took time for us today because we haven't seen each other in a long time and so we will catch up over our summer holiday Shelia Stevens my friend and co-host and myself Leah Verdley so welcome yeah what did I do the last month I had a very nice vacation on Sardinia that's a little island um, in the south of Europe it's Italian but it's um, it's an island as I said and I didn't just have like holidays with my family we did glamping not camping we had a nice bungalow and a uh, shower inside but we were a lot of the time just on the beach and outside in the nature and yeah just had a great time so that's what I did and I um, treated myself as well to a summer school and what I mean by mm -hmm. that is I, oh, yeah. I know what you booked do like thousands of tons now I booked like four or five coaches <laughs> like I love Shelly knows that I love uh, coaching I, I'm a total nerd I love um, being educate myself I love seeing more I love spiritual things I love the three principles of course so I just love um, school in a way. So I worked with Isla Coates and Jamie Smart and Joshua Hornick and Ankush Chain. So that's, and it's not over yet. It, it all started like five, six weeks ago and it will end like in September and then I continue. I always do something for myself and to deepen my learning and being of deeper service with my for my clients. So what what have I seen? What was what was um really um how do you say that interesting is that all of these people there are regular people. They are just like you and me. And they are they are great coaches. And they they are experienced coaches as well. So what did they do to be or have the skill level they have today? Mm. And what I've seen is they all have a several things in common and one thing is that's a spiritual thing you can't really see it but you can feel it and what they have in common is that they have a sense a knowing they must have had an insight around human potential and the human essence and at the end the principle of mind Mm. All of them see the potential, the wholeness, the not brokenness, the love, the 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 the, the creativity, the capacity for insight in human beings, mm. not just in them, but in all of them and in all of us, and. They're, that's their standing, they're coming from there. So that's something they know deeply in their bones. So they're, they're of service 
with this inner knowing that the person opposite them or in the groups or in whatever they do already have that within. So mm. they rely on that as well. Mm. And it's a lot easier to fail, to try, to find entrances, to play when you know that. And that's one thing I saw that I, all of them have in common. Yeah. Can I ask some questions around that, Leah? Mm -hmm. I haven't. I don't even think I've said a word yet. Hello, everybody. Mm -hmm. Also from <laughs> me. Oh, we just jumped on spontaneously today, so I was like, had no idea we were going to be talking. But um, Leah, I I really would like you to, if you would, like go a little bit deeper on that because I think for me. I, I've been coaching other coaches for the last, you know, 15 years around, you know, getting a business they love and that they can live from. And a lot of coaches that I've worked with over the past 15 years, they talk about bringing or not bringing the potential and other recognizing the potential in humans or the word in general, achieving your potential as a human being is something that you might hear a lot out in the world, whether it's in the area of personal development or in coaching or in maybe performance optimization. Like, I think the way you're talking about potential is different. Um, would you like just expand a little bit mm -hmm. on what you mean by they see the potential? Yeah, they, it, it, it is not, it's, it's from a viewpoint of um, everything is already there. So it's really um, this inner knowing of, in a way, of the all oneness of the consciousness in all of us. And not just, maybe even not just in all of us, but in everything. So it's from there. Like, um, in a way, there is nothing to do and nothing to achieve and nothing to become because we already home, whole and there. That's kind of the the haltung. How do you say haltung? It's the position you take. It's the stance you take. The yeah. stance. Mm -hmm. And from there, you can play the game of life. So that's like... The knowing the the having a sense, I don't I wouldn't say they would say it in my words, they say it in all their words, but it's an inner knowing of the limitlessness of our souls or our inner beings or our essence or our God or mm -hmm. higher beings, whatever you want to call it, that that um a feeling for that. And when you have that feeling and when you really see that in your client or in the person that you're working with, then you open up a room for them to see it for themselves. Mm. And from there, they can play the game of life, like being in life, making more money, uh, having great relationships, um, uh, doing uh, a job that they really would like to experience or do or create the book or whatever comes to mind for the person has got uh, uh, the, the room opens up for them to have the insights, the nuggets, the, the wisdom to take the steps toward whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. So it's not we need to do something that you could reach your potential. You already are the potential within. And from there, you are free to express mm. this, whatever you want to express in yeah. this form, space, <laughs> time, continuum, somehow. Mm. Yeah. Does that make sense? It totally does. And I, yeah, and I know the direction that you're pointing in, but I wanted to just make that discrepancy mm. because I think there's a there's a big difference. Big yes. difference. Yeah. yeah. So that was one thing. And that resonates, of course, with me. And that's probably um <laughs> that's probably the 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 thing that that matters most 
So, um, the other things are the skills and the hours, the time and the tension they gave into this profession, like they coached their asses off for mm. a long, 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 long time. Yeah. And they have a very uh, well equipped sense of where to go. So they really um, know that they can trust their intuition. And they have different skill sets of how to 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 go there so the the skill sets how you do that is not that important mm. the important thing is that you do it and that you 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 put in the time and attention and Jamie made a, a a really fun metaphor and it was around police officer who trained to find out where the people smuggled rocks or or things in a in a airport or in a port so at the beginning they don't have a real education for that in the police force so people or police officer who want to do that they just have to do it mm. so they go down there and they follow their feeling and intuition they have a few things they look for but they just follow whatever they feel and they take out people and at the beginning their rate is really low and after six months the rate is like immensely higher of them to be right so, so that's are you talking very about interesting are you talking about at least that work at like a port authority or yes. the airport or which place are they working? Um, like on a, a port often. Okay. Uh, a port, like a, like um, where ships come in. Ships or okay. airport or just the toll one, the, um, how do you call toll? Yeah. So the, oh gosh. Um, oh, I can't think of the word. It's like, it's where they're, you're in customs. Crossing the in borders. Customs, the, yeah. yeah. And they're, are they looking for smuggled goods or oh, things that yes. are brought mm -hmm. in? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. So when they're looking for these um, items that are allowed or not allowed in the beginning, they have a, their intuition of pick, who they're picking out isn't hitting it. But the longer that they go on, they they instinctively see who might have something illegal with them or not. Yes, okay. Absolutely. Okay. And and that's what I see too. So you develop a sense of where to go. And mm -hmm. the sense is either way to find out what or how do the people see their life. So what's their made up? Um, thinking mm -hmm. around their life and to really feel into that that could be a direction to go or to really see where they or already have wisdom where they already see it where the people do have insights and um, the capacity to see it as well or when and how to educate or to to put something out that someone could see something new. Mm. So to these coaches um, have several doorways in, and they're sometimes different. I mean, Jamie is a, an NLP master. He has really seen deeply in the three principles. He's really good at what he's doing. And um, the... the, the He's like a spürhund. Uh, <laughs> He's like a bloodhound. A bloodhound in finding the way in through his intuition, through mm. what he, he looks for and sees. And all of them had similar qualities. Mm. like, and, and that did stand out to me as well. Mm. So it was this really seeing the potential in people as the, the essence, mind through all of us, uh, coming from this loving, deeply being of service place mm. and 
um, not being afraid to be of service for the other person and making a fool of yourself no matter what to find the entrance like really following your intuition following whatever you think could help and they they're really skilled because they do it for a long time and they did it when they failed and they did it when it didn't work out well and they did it when they thought I'm not good enough and they did it when they were afraid and they did it again and again and again mm. and again. So um, Isla said that in one of our last calls, like uh, a teacher she was working with said, there are no a talented artist they are very skilled and very um artists that that practice their craft over and over and over and over again mm -hmm. and i think in this is a lot for all of us whatever you do if you're a coach or or in in any profession or in anything in life um that's that's a way to to master whatever you you do yeah yeah I love that mm -hmm. and I really love that um example with uh the police I think that makes it so clear like you know you some because sometimes I think we we believe what's when you say practice or gaining expertise that we need someone else to tell us how to do it uh, we need to follow someone else's instructions or the police rules on how to pick people out of a, a, a line who are smuggling goods. And um, you can do that. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Just just, just like you're saying, you love, I know you, Leah, you love going to these courses. It's like her favorite hobby in the world. She would rather go to uh, a coach training or some of those spiritual training than buy a pair of expensive shoes. Yes. Like she would just rather Absolutely. take the coach training. <laughs> But what I hear you saying is, you know, even, even setting out, going forth, whatever you're trying to achieve, just with your own felt sense um, and just going at it, just going at it, just going at yes. it again and again and again yes. and again, that you will develop senses for yep. what you're doing. Yeah. And, and that's the leverage. Like that's the thing that really changes everything. Mm -hmm. And of course, there are helpful tools and and stuff like language, like whatever you did in NLP, whatever you do in yeah. energy, but whatever, it doesn't matter if it helps. But to see that's not the thing that that really makes the difference. Mm. It is seeing, and it is really to to put yourself out and in the game yeah. and do it. Yeah, love that. Love that. Mm -hmm. So you have a third one? Do you have a third one? I, I don't know. Did I have a third one? <laughs> Probably I had a third one. Already forgot this third one. But yeah, I, I I really liked to see that in very different people and different approaches and mm. and to just um yeah, be a, again and again to to know that it's it's a continuous thing and what all of them have too and that's a very interesting thing because that's probably very unique to the three principle uh, um knowing people that somehow we develop a, a resilience toward our feelings and we do it anyway or that could be a a possibility to just feel whatever you feel and do it anyway because all of us even the biggest experts or the most advanced people in any field have insecure thinking mm. and we're never ever are overcoming that that's a human experience and to be okay with the thinking and feeling and and do it anyway that's a, a liberating thing to mm. to see yeah 
Mm -hmm. We don't have to solve it or not feeling it or do something with it. Nothing. Just yeah. be and have it and feel it and be in, be in life and do your craft. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's a huge point for people listening because so many people, for them, their feeling really matters to them. You know, if they yeah. have if they have that inside feeling of, oh, this feels icky, this feels hard, this feels uncomfortable, then that feeling really matters to them. Mm -hmm. And they let it stop them from moving forward. It keeps yeah. them keeps them from going out into the world. It keeps them from, you know, making um making those uncomfortable efforts on mm. whatever the thing is they're trying to figure out how to do. Um and I love that so much. And that was, that's for me, one of the, the things that I feel like I got luckily just given to me. I didn't have to work mm -hmm. on, on that, but you, you know, you know, Leah from working together, like I have a highly actively insecure brain that is constantly um, telling me that I can't do this, or this is you know, you're, you're not good enough for that. Mm -hmm. And, and the uncomfortable feelings that come with that are really strong. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it feels for me, like, as long as I can remember, I just, I, have, I kind of always had that, but at the same time, it doesn't matter to me that much. It's just like, yeah, okay. So I feel that way next let's keep going. So I do a lot of things with a very uncomfortable mm -hmm. feeling, right? a lot of things oh someone's bringing leah some yes. lunch oh <laughs> don't tell me she's <laughs> getting lunch served <laughs> and that's something I've, I've been listening to some things with isla the last couple of weeks as well and that's something i hear her talk about a lot right yes um this idea of yeah yeah you know making a proposal to a coaching client um you, you might not feel comfortable doing that okay and like mm -hmm. we don't have to let ourselves be stopped in our tracks by uncomfortable feelings yes and I think somehow ah that just when you were talking probably that's one thing more all of these people they just do stuff so they do whatever occurs to them to do mm. And they they don't they they're not waiting for an insight or an inspiration or um, that they need to see something deeper or different. They do, and they do it sometimes mainstream or or even like plain marketing or not at all or more like the prosperous coach way however they do it mm. they do it so they're in the game yeah and to that's that's the thing they didn't just have insights they they do put the insights into motion in practical in everyday life mm. and and that's a huge difference i see sometimes clients or people in this community they they don't put what they've seen for themselves um into practice somehow mm. it stays in in the inside world i don't know how yeah. to put it you know what i mean yeah and and we do that too. We we do whatever occurs to us, and then we we are in life, and then things manifest because money. Like we we put in the work to to let it occur in life. Yeah, yeah. I think I heard someone say recently. I can't even remember what I was listening to, but um. Oh yeah, I I. I got uh, an email newsletter from Marta um, from Belgium. We had a mm -hmm. podcast episode with her recently yeah. and she was talking about Mel Robbins, um, who is this like big mega coach in the U S mm -hmm. with million, millions of followers. And 
Um, I never she has really... big glasses. Yeah, too. she has big glasses <laughs> as well, and I could never really get into her. Like I, I it was just something. Um, but then something happened, and she saw something deeper, and she's really different. I don't know if you've listened to some of her stuff recently, yeah. Leah, but um, she was talking about speaking things into the world. So she, this idea of it's one thing to have a desire within ourselves, right? And it's another thing to bring it into the form in the form. And she was just saying in the form of speaking, not even moving mm -hmm. your hands yet. Yeah, may, yeah. And it was the idea. Enough. It was it was the idea of just saying um, to a friend, "Hey, um, you know, the last two years I was in a phase where I wanted to stay home a lot. I remember I told you that I was like, if if someone invites me for, for an outside public speaking event, I'm not going. These are her words. I'm not going right now." And then um, they got her team got a call and the team had been told uh, to her uh, from her that she was not taking outside speaking events. Right. But actually something had shifted in her for a while back, but she had never said anything about it. She had gotten a desire to do more things abroad or to, you know, have a broader perspective of her work, not just being in the U.S. And so when someone called and asked her to come and speak abroad in, I don't know, Europe or something, her team said no. And she realized in that moment, oh, I've had an inside thing happen, mm. but I haven't spoken it into mm. the world. My team doesn't know, no, nobody else knows about it. And then now opportunities are are coming in more because she's talking about like that being something that interests her. Do you know what I mean? Totally. So when, yeah. you, when you said, when you said, you know, bringing it, to the outside world that's the first thing that popped into my mind mm. and there's so many ways that, that we can do that you know like mm. one is the speaking it out one is the getting active you know doing something you know getting yes. on your computer writing yes. that email like whatever the thing is but yeah or or really not doing anything at all if that's the real notch and intuition yeah. you have yes yes the real yes and, I'm going to talk about that on the next episode. Yeah, that me too. Me. That's very cool. <laughs> We've got to talk about that because that's so interesting. We we do things when we shouldn't and we don't do things when we should. So yeah. and oh, well, I want to talk shouldn't. about that on the next yes, episode. Yes, we'll got to do that. Yes. Okay, let's wrap up. Okay, guys. So thanks so much for listening in today. Leah, I, I just felt so much joy. I was honestly, when you ping me today that you had so, like <laughs> spontaneous time for episodes, I wasn't feeling very good. Like on the inside, I'm feeling a bit sick. I had, um, I was sick on the weekend, but you just gave me a boost of like energy mm. and I, uh, that makes me so happy. It makes me so happy to spend time with you. So I hope that our listeners are feeling the same, um, boost of energy and joyousness and i hope you guys heard something for yourself today leah and thanks for sharing those beautiful experiences mm -hmm. that you uh, gained from those courses you were on or those coachings mm -hmm. that you took part in and you know i'm gonna um ask you a million other questions when we hang up <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you want to uh, continue listening just go ahead and follow us on um, spotify or apple podcast tell a friend we love it when people get um, to hear about this conversation and we will hear from you soon on the next episode of time for you until then bye, bye.